As a trader, you need to be hyper aware of your expiration date. You may want to take action before expiration and be vigilant in monitoring that position because options are volatile and things can change. Hey, I'm Desiree. I'm Denver. Welcome to Options Trading Essentials, a video series dedicated to teaching you the ins and outs of options trading. In this episode, we're explaining options expiration. Unlike stocks, options expire, meaning that someday you'll no longer be able to trade or exercise that contract. That's right. Just like the expiration date on your passport, once an option hits its expiration date, you can no longer use it. So in this episode, we're going to talk about expiration. What is it? Mm -hmm. How does it work? And what happens to an option once it reaches expiration? And later on, Kenlyn Obi will walk us through an option chain on the Robinhood mobile app, showing us how to navigate and identify different option expirations. But first, Desiree, tell us what an option expiration is. Remember back in episode three, we talked about how every option has four main contract specifications. The options type, the underlying stock, the strike price, and finally, its expiration date. The expiration date is the last day that the options contract can be bought, sold, or exercised. This makes options uniquely different from owning shares of stock because theoretically, you can own a stock forever, as long as that company still exists and is publicly traded. But with options, they have a limited lifespan. There's a point in time when they'll no longer exist. Essentially, with the expiration date, there's a built-in clock that determines how long a buyer can exercise their rights under the contract. This characteristic directly impacts an option's value. A major consideration when choosing an option to buy or sell is how many days are left until expiration, which we'll discuss in detail in future episodes. Obi, walk us through the details of expiration. So let's take a look at an example. And here I have a four month calendar. As we're filming this video, it's the month of August. So we're looking ahead to September, October, November, and December. Now, when you look at your option chain, you're gonna see a list of expiration dates. The first one I wanna focus on is something we call monthly expiration. Now, back in the day when options first started trading, these were the only expirations available to options traders. All options expired once a month and it expired on the third Friday of every month. So looking at September, the first is on a Wednesday. So our first, second, third Friday is September 17th. That would be our standard monthly expiration for September. And in your trading app, you might see this notated as SEP 17, and it might have a, a year attached to that, 21. Now let's look at October, November, and December. Our third Friday in October is the 15th. And that would be Oct or October 15th. In November, our third Friday is the 19th. That would be listed as Nov 19. And then in December, our third Friday is the 17th and that would be notated as DEES, or December 17. Now in 2005, the industry added something that we call weekly options. These are options that expire every Friday in addition to the third Friday of every month. So for example, if we were looking at our option chain, we might see an expiration for September 3rd, September 10th, and so on. And those options will be listed out for about a month or so at a time. Now, it's important to note, not every underlying has weekly options. So when you're looking at your option chain, and if you don't see weekly options, it could just be that that underlying doesn't list weekly options, and you'll only see that third Friday of the month listed, which will be the monthly expirations. All right, next, let's talk about a particular expiration that you might not see too often, depending on what underlying instrument you're trading. These are called quarterly options. These are typically usually underlyings that have options that are for stock indices or other unique financial products. But if they do have quarterlies, they will expire on the last day of the quarter. So our quarterly expirations would be in March, June, September, and December. And on this calendar, you can see we might have a quarterly expiration for, for options on September 30th, which falls on a Thursday. 
different from our traditional expirations that we're used to seeing on Friday. Meanwhile, in December, the last day of December 31st, which would be the end of Q4, we would have an expiration on a Friday. All right, let's talk a little bit about holidays. Remember, when there's a holiday, the market can be closed depending on which holiday it is. So always be aware of which holidays on the calendar will result in the stock and options market being closed. Now, why is this important when it comes to expiration? Well, if a holiday falls on an expiration, the market's closed, so that expiration will move up a day on the calendar. We have Labor Day, the market will be closed there. On Thursday, November 25th, we have Thanksgiving. This will be a market holiday. Now, what's important to note about this is the Friday after Thanksgiving is a half trading day, which means the markets will close early. So those options that you're used to having until late in the trading day to close or manage, you're only gonna have a half day to do that. But what about Christmas? Christmas falls on a Saturday this year, but the market will be closed the day before on Christmas Eve, the 24th, which falls on a Friday. So any option that had an expiration on December 24th, guess what? The market's closed. So those options will expire on the 23rd, and that'll be your last day to trade, exercise, or close the option. So it's important to be aware of where these holidays sit. One final note. There are some underlyings out there that have unique characteristics to how and when they expire. For example, you might be trading an underlying that has a Monday expiration, a Wednesday expiration, possibly a Thursday expiration. And it's not just at the end of the trading day. There might be a morning settlement, an afternoon settlement, and these are more complex underlying. So if you trade those, once again, know what you trade, know how they expire, and understand their contract specifications before you trade them. Along with SIBO, 1973 also saw the birth of the Options Clearing Corporation, or OCC. The OCC is the central clearinghouse for listed stock options in the United States. It was created to ensure that the obligations associated with option contracts are fulfilled in a timely and reliable manner. This means that when you place a trade with your broker and it's executed on the exchange, the information is passed along and the trade is cleared by the OCC. If you exercise your option, the OCC stands ready to make delivery, even if the seller of the option somehow defaults on their obligations. This helps to keep all parties accountable. It's the way the whole system works and ensure options are reliable for all participants involved. If you've learned one thing in this episode is that the expiration date of an option is very important. Denver, can you dive into the options chain and show us? You know I can. You know what? How about we run? How do you feel about Nike? Yes, oh, let's do Nike. I like that. <laughs> All right, so we, uh, you know, we're gonna start on our main page. We're gonna go to Nike, type that in, and A-I-K, there we go. Boom, you select it. All right, trade options, discovery page. So now what we want to focus on here are the expiration dates at the top. We're going to scroll a little bit over. Matter of fact, I'm going to scroll all the way over. You're going to see January 20th, 2023. That's way out there. Before that, there's June 17th, 2022. This is getting confusing. So because we started from like August 20th, so like I'm, I need some details there. If you guys remember, Back when options first started trading, there was only one expiration series a month, and it was, was, it was just called options expiration. And these were the options that expired every third Friday of the month. So imagine an entire options trading industry where every third Friday of your month, Kendall, your team, it would be your busiest day of the month. Absolutely. <laughs> the most phone calls, the most chats, the most emails, because all of the options for that month were expiring on that one day. But that's September 17th, if I tap on that, that is the quote unquote monthly expiring options because it's the third Friday of the month. And then if you keep going out, you'll see there's still some weeklies. But then when we get past November, right, we have November 19th, and what's our next expiration after that? I see, uh, December se uh, 17th. Which is the third Friday of December. Yep. So the way options are listed, you get your weeklies up front. So as traders, we can pick and choose with that precision where we want our options to expire. But as we get further out in time, the exchanges are only listing those monthly expirations that you see. 
And then if you look at the end of that list, we go from January 21st, 2022 to June 17th, which is six months later, yep. and then January 20th, 2023. These would be our quote unquote leap options. So kind of figuring out what each of these dates represent is important as a trader when we pick our expirations. Definitely. And it does all depend also, what's your strategy? What are you going for here? And as a trader, you need to be hyper aware of your expiration date. You may want to take action before expiration. So you really need to be aware of your expiration date of your contract and be vigilant in monitoring that position um, because options are volatile and things can change. Manage your risk, manage okay. your risk. The single easiest way to manage your risk going into expiration, honestly, is to try to avoid it. And so knowing your expiration date, I, I mentioned this earlier in the series, options aren't a set and forget product. It's not like buying 100 shares of your the stock you think uh, you're gonna invest in for 20 years and putting it in a drawer and hoping it goes up, right? Yeah. Options are an active sport. If we're trading weekly options every week, then we have to be attuned to what's happening every week mm. and manage our risk accordingly. Do most options traders then do something before expiration date? It all factors in together, right? So you may want to exit the position. Mm -hmm. You've, If you are buying an option contract, you've paid the premium to enter this position. So if you're gaining value or if you're losing value, maybe you want to lock in those gains or you want to cut your losses I and see. you just close that position within the market and gather those proceeds from your sale. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you hold it to expiration, you are entering into another world of risk, as Obi has mentioned, expiration risk, which brings in a lot of other factors. Um, and it's a lot more components that you're now exposed to, whether you're long or short mm -hmm. the option contract. So there's a lot that goes into it, but typically speaking, uh, most investors do get out of option positions prior to expiration. It's, I cannot stress what she just said enough. Mm -hmm. The best way to manage expiration risk is to try and avoid it. You don't wanna, you wanna leave anything up to yeah, chance. Okay. If you can manage that risk ahead of time by closing a position or you know, rolling it out to a, to a further out expiration, it just, it saves you a lot of headaches potentially. Absolutely. So Kendall, do the different dates affect the price of the options? So. They have what's called time value associated, you know, with an option contract. And we've touched on this a little bit, but if you're looking at contracts that have a nearer expiration, they're gonna have less time value associated with them typically than a contract that is further out in expiration because they have a huge chunk of time value. So much can change within that window of time, which could then change the premium pricing of the contract itself. Yeah, and we're gonna really go into this in the next few episodes. But just let's look at our phones real quick. Okay. Let's start on the options expiring August 20th, so this week. All right, let's look at the, we're on the call options side of the chain. Uh, let's just look at the 175 call for Nike. What's it trading at right now? 22 cents. Oh. Now let's go out to September 17th. 2.50. 2 2.50. Now let's go out to December 17th, 8.28. You can see there's eight, dollars and 28 cents a premium versus 22 cents and this option is out of the money mm -hmm. so there's no intrinsic value meaning there's no value in this option other than its time value and that just shows you as you go out further in time options are more expensive all things held equal mm -hmm. so I, I went i just went all the way to the end i went to yeah. january 20th 2023 that so, like, I, first of all, you know, it's, it's at like $28.80. It's, it's crazy to me. So how, like, in this scenario, with this leap, how would you, how would you manage this? Like, you know, let, let's say you purchased it, but what, what could you, how could you leverage this? So you're paying for time. Mm. And you're paying for the right to buy shares of Nike at $175. And you're paying to have that right for many, many months, and now in this case, over a year. So I use the analogy of, you know, imagine you you wanted to buy a house, right? You go, you get your realtor, you walk through the house, um, and you don't want to put an offer on the house, but you don't want anyone else to put an offer. So you go to the seller, hey, like, I want to think about this, but I don't want to, I don't want you to sell this house to anyone else. So I'll pay you a premium to give me the right to buy this house for five days. 
that might be a small premium, but if you told that person like, I want to think about buying your house for two years. Mm. That person's gonna be like, I need way more than this if I'm not gonna sell my house to anyone else. So you're paying, you're paying for time, you're paying for the right to buy those shares because it's so long, to Kendall's point. The stock can do a lot of things in the next two years compared I love to that two days. Example. Yeah, that's a great example. Time is money. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is getting so interesting. I want I want to learn more about this time decay and yeah, this is where it gets fun. Yes. <laughs> On the next, options trading essentials. If you're confused about options pricing, you're not alone. An options premium is the price tag of the option. It's the amount buyers and sellers agree an option is worth. I'm so curious about what goes into that pricing. Price, time, and implied volatility. It's complicated. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this episode, smash that like button, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get alerted when new episodes become available. Remember, options involve risks and are not suitable for all investors. Before trading, check out the link below in the description.